It is World Communion Sunday. It is a time to celebrate that God is not only with us, but that he is with us within and working in the church throughout the world. We celebrate communion and rejoice that God continues to be at work in this church and in all the churches, continuing to build up, to strengthen, to lead out, so that his will can be done here and everywhere. As we rejoice in God's provision, in his love and care, let us hear these words from the prophet Isaiah. He'll be reading in the second chapter, beginning at verse 2 and going down through verse 5. In the days to come, the mountains of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that we may teach, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us hear also this reading from Romans. Here we'll be reading in the 6th chapter, beginning at verse 15 and going down through verse 23. May we still be listening, and may we hear what Scripture is saying to us, the church. What then? Should we sin because we are not under the law, because but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves... To anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you have once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of our natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you are free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did that get from the things of which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. May all who have heard these words trust that they come from our good, gracious, and loving God, that we can be empowered and encouraged by them today and always. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Holy, holy, holy God. We pray that we will be looking for your light, that we will receive your word, that we feed on it and nourish on it, and that we will go out ready to commune with all your people, giving you thanks and praise. We rejoice in your love, O Lord. May we be guided by it now and always. The whole idea of slavery is not one that excites many people, at least none that I'm aware of. Slavery is not an exciting idea that you have no control, that you have 
no power that you are forced to do someone else's bidding. Of course, the reality for most of us is we do not recognize the chains that bind us. We do not recognize or even want to acknowledge the things that have us in our hold. The reality now, unlike when I was a kid, is most everybody can know anything and everything. They'll just take out their phone, punch a few buttons, or what might look like a button, and then they'll tell you what the internet says or what Google might tell them. They might even be so bold as to ask their electronic assistant that's sitting on the wall, tell me what the weather will be today. Tell me what is going to happen here or there or everywhere. How do we do with not knowing? Do we like the unknown at all? How do we feel about what Scripture says when it talks about that we will all go to the Lord's house one day and worship, that we will be led out in righteousness? <clears throat> this reading from Isaiah that speaks of them turning their spears into pruning hooks and their swords into plowshares. Such a strange idea when all there seems to be talk of is wars and rumors of wars. Who will be the next leader? It seems to bring people to be turning their pruning hooks into spears and their plow shears into swords. People get so excited, so worked up. And Isaiah calls us to walk in the light of the Lord. That is the true thing we need to be doing is to recognize what is leading us around, what has us turned aside, and what is leading us to walk with our God. Here in Romans, Paul is very forcefully telling folks, you have been enslaved. You are a slave to your life. Or you can be a slave to God. You have to choose who you will be enslaved to. Again, I know many of you are thinking, I'm not enslaved to anything. I imagine we wouldn't think of it that way, but as Diane and I were driving around and talking about something, and suddenly a notification came up on her phone answering that very question of where we might eat and we could get a coupon for that. It was like, wait, what? Mm -hmm. We don't talk about being enslaved, but if you're like me and you see a commercial for some thing that you probably know isn't really tasty, your mouth will be watering anyway, and you're suddenly going to have a rumbling in your stomach. We've had lots of people who get excited when we have communion because they're thinking, oh boy, I can get the leftover bread. It will be so, so good. What gets you excited? Do we get excited thinking about God, or do we get excited thinking about God's creation? Do we trust that God is going to use this day, even this day, to be a blessing and an encouragement? Or have we already decided, well, the weather's doing this, or the sun's going to be too hot or too cold, or I've gotten too old or too sore or too grumpy? We've set all sorts of limitations on ourselves, haven't we? We decide all sorts of things just like we're God. We're enslaved to our senses, to our perceptions, to what we hope will happen. Again, we don't think about it as slavery because we think we're in charge and that we're capable. Paul is calling us to recognize that we have been enslaved by all the wrong things and those things don't lead to life or to encouragement or to better living. They lead to death. We have to turn to our God. Yes, it's the same sermon in a different way, folks, but we still need to hear it, don't we? We continually need to draw close to our God. 
I keep hoping that I'm going to get it figured out and not have to feel like, oh, I've got so much farther to go. That again is me being enslaved to my perceptions and my thoughts. If I actually go back and pay attention to scripture, that it talks about God singing over me as I was quilted together in my mother's womb. I hadn't even been born yet. I wasn't even aware there was God, and he was excited that I was going to be coming into the world. What else do I need to be thinking of than that God sings over me? God sent me here to be a blessing. I can get that twisted and make myself into a real mess, or I can just rejoice that I'm already part of the family of God. I may need to be refined. I may need to have all sorts of sanctification, justification, purification, but I'm in the family. I don't have to worry about finding the right master. The right master already has me. It's just am I paying attention to him or to something else? Am I choosing to walk in God's light or am I doing my own thing my own way and wondering why I'm getting nowhere? What are we enslaved to? What are we led by? What are we encouraged by? Were we tore up by the result of the Tennessee-Arkansas game last night? Did it steal our sleep and our rest? Did we have so much going on that we didn't plan and prepare for this day of worship? What is leading us? What is guiding us? I pray that we'll continue to trust that God is with us and for us and that nothing can conquer us because we have him in our lives. That we'll continue to seek and be led by his grace upon grace upon grace upon grace that we'll desire to share that light with everyone we meet, that we'll desire to rise up and do the good that God has set before us today and always. Let us rejoice in our God. Let us celebrate his love and care. Let us be enslaved to his love, hope, joy, and peace, now and forevermore. Let's give God the glory. Amen and amen. Family of God, I invite you to stand if you are able and join our statement of faith, Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. It is World Communion Sunday. It is a celebration that God continues to feed us, to nourish us, to guide and direct us. As it is being shared throughout the world, I give you this invitation to this table. That this is not the table of this particular church. This is not the table of any particular denomination. But this is the Lord's table. It is open to all those who profess faith in Christ. It is open to all those who would confess that they know the Lord a little, but seek to know him more. It is open to all those who recognize they've been enslaved to the wrong things, but want to be enslaved to the good, the love, the hope, and the joy and peace that our God has for us. Let us rejoice that this table is open to us. Let us approach and rejoice and give thanks and praise. Let us join together in the great prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, holy God. To rejoice that you continue to be at work around us, in us, through us, and for us. That you lead, guide, and direct us just as you have been doing from before 
the earth, or anything that was created. We thank you for speaking creation into being, that you gave us a place to be and to come to learn to know you, that we can discover how we can be a blessing, to be an encouragement, that we can do so much more. We thank you for all those who came before. We rejoice in their efforts. We pray that we will join with them in leading others to Christ, that we will share your love, that we will be all that you've called and made us to be, and that we can join with them and forever sing the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We rejoice that Christ has come, that he is with us now in spirit. But even before he came to us as we know him now, that he was having this time with his disciples. And he was thinking of us even then. That even on that night when he was betrayed, as he took bread, raised it up to heaven, gave thanks, and broke it, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. He also took the cup, raising it up and giving thanks. He poured it out, saying, This is a new covenant, poured out in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. So that whenever we take this bread and drink this cup, we rejoice that we do so with those disciples long ago by the Spirit, that by that same Spirit we celebrate with all those throughout the world celebrating this World Communion Sunday, that we can continue to draw close to God, that we can be fed body and blood by Him, that we can be strengthened and nourished, that we can know His Spirit is covering and empowering and enabling. We rejoice in these and the great mysteries of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ is coming again. Great Holy Father, Heavenly Son, we rejoice that your Spirit is here, that by your Spirit this bread and this cup are enabling us to rise up and do so much more, that by your Spirit we can partake with other believers and that we can know and be known because of your love and grace. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. We rejoice in you. We give you thanks and praise, and we rejoice that through Christ, with Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, eternal God, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. All is ready. Let us keep the feast. Whenever we take this bread and drink this cup, let us do so in remembrance of him. Please stand and receive this blessing after the communion. May this, the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, sustain, uphold, and empower you this day and forevermore. To God be the glory. Amen and amen. 